Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. On Luigi Van 64D. Last episode, I got this thing. It says it's one chord is autographed to my dearest Wendy. Uh, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Wendy, Wendy. Huh, might be a Wendy. Then, I think I found my Wendy. Let's go. Hi there. Bye there. Oh, Mr. Wright! How are you? Uh, Mr. Powers! Have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Aw, oh, poor Mr. Will Powers. Wait, how are you connected to the murder? Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's a sequel to The Steel Samurai. I see. This time, there are three Samurai Brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, The Nickel Samurai. It's the it's a love why of Neo in Neo Old Tokyo. I see. Wait, w wait! A love what? <laughs> a love why? This girl, Sayo, works at the tea shop, and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet, times three. <laughs> yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Uh... Yes, Pearls? What happens next? I want to know. Mrs. Ayo, does Mrs. Ayo fall in love? Does she? Doesn't she? <laughs> Every Sunday at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. I'm going to stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater start, starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. All right. Nice. I, I almost was like, nice going, dude. But I'm like, well, eh. He's got pride in his thing. I can appreciate this. I appreciate this guy. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja is like the samurai shows, aimed towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't climb a wall, but became a big pop star. Uh, what? He was a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing! With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. A, a ninja with a bright red guitar? And then, the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Mizola. Jammin' vs. the Muromachi Vive. Suddenly, a brave hero catches a not so jammin' cold the night before Battle 3! Aww, that's too bad for him! Y yeah. But this kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Uh. Yes, Pearl? But what happens next? I wanna know! Jammin. This is Jammin Ninja! Will he be able to sing? What about. What about Princess Melissa Mizola? <laughs> Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Uh. Which show should I watch? Mm. I can't believe she's really considering it! See, the problem with this that I have. Uh. I have a feeling that the Jam and Ninja show might be a little delayed, maybe. Have, might have a little bit of filler in a few seconds. Might, might, might have a few filler for a couple weeks, until they get a new star. And I'm not exactly sure about the Nickel Samurai. It all depends on how well this trial goes. So, let's see what I got. I have a guide map. Um, oh, do you know anything about this? S -s sorry. Uh, thanks for taking the time to take it out and show it to me. But I'm really sorry, I don't know a thing about it. Well, at least he's honest. Oh yeah. I can't believe it. A kidnapping. Do you remember what the person looked like who gave it to this to you? It was a bellboy, and... And I didn't suspect a thing because he looked like such a normal old man. Old man, huh? Huh. Old man. He did look kinda old, I don't remember much about him. And let's look at this. Alright. Stab wound from a knife from a knife in there. 
But for some reason, the he was in that chair with the things and okay. Blind glass. Yeah, this. The guitar case. That was Wands. I'm guessing you've seen this case before? It's pretty famous by now. It stands out because it holds the bright red guitar. The bright red guitar. The Jam and Ninja's signature item. But if the guitar is so important, how can he forget it for the award ceremony? That does seem a little strange. And, uh, an autograph. Uh, okay, do you know anything about this? Guess not. Alright. Let's take it to someone who will know something about this. By willpowers. By you. Alright, uh, let's see what happens if I show you this. I don't have anything to say to delinquents like you. Ugh. She's clamming up like an old clam she is. Please, anything would be helpful. Well then, how about I tell you my measurements? Uh, uh, no, 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 the thing. I'm the th really. She really doesn't like you, does she, Mr. Nick? I know, I know. Fine. I'll present you with a present. Take that! <sighs> All right, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please tell us what you saw. But all, oh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun with you young'un's expense. Because I'm a little devil, after all. Uh, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? Alright, I'll give you what you want. We all know you want this! Th 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 that's, that's one's autograph! Yes, it is. And, and it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. Th that's me, right? Right? Uh, my name is Wendy Oldback, so that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy. But somehow, I don't think that Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please, give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, um, I can't let you have it just, uh, just like that. Yes, yes, I know. But how about an exchange? What? 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 Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Wright, you win! Miss Neil back, ready to open up her heart. Oh, my dearest Juan! Whoa! Yikes! Here. Gah, take it. Give him to Wendy, dearest, it said. <sighs> I feel bad for you now. Huh? I'll tell you I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh no! It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. That was just a coincidence. It was on my way to the toilet biting my own business. And did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get the gift certificate or two out of my out of it, maybe more. Gift certificate? Recruited again for the for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time, you're going to get it. I'm going to work hard to get you by your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. Ongard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did it. My, he did my dear poor one in. I just do. A yellow belly chicken. A yellow belly chicken. I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did... What did Mr. Ongard ever do to her to deserve this? I mean, seriously. What did Mr. Ongard do to you to make you so... Oh, you don't know. That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick. Wh what is it? What's a scandal? Oh, uh, I'll tell you about that after we get home, okay? Poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do... Vials and wild temptress mean? Uh, how about we just listen to what Mr. Oldback, Miss Oldback has to say for now, okay, Paris? So, Miss Oldback, uh, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy. He shot the girl into one on purpose. His own manager? But why? I thought lawyers are smart. It was, it was to create a scandal and make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal and dragged his reputation through the mud. Scandal? This sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. 
Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Juan, Mr. Juan Guard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Ugh, of course, a tabloid. Next week. Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbag have information like that? And where does she get it? <laughs> uh. Oh, have you seen a camera? I don't have anything to say to the like was like you. Uh, fine, I don't care about those either. Uh. Oh yeah. Come on, you're a fan. Uh, eh. No, you're, you don't know anything? And this would be his death. Uh, let's see. Do you know anything? No, you don't. Okay. Here. Man, you really hate us, don't you? Alright then. Oh, Francisco Von Karn is here. Huh. Really? Really? Really, old bag? Alright, so there's a scandal. Let's see who we can talk to about that. Yeah, let's talk to... You, about her. Hey, that's Miss Andrews! She's Matt's manager! Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> huh. So Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Mr. Andrews? Well, let's see. Uh, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know? <gasps> There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Ah, if you're interested, I can give you a little bit of the details. He's so happy, he looks like the lion that just found his next meal. Wait, how old are they? Yes, 23 and 24. Aw. Alright, so let's see. What's the gossip? Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Just a little bit? Ah, so you're interested in it too? I figured you would be. Yeah. I have much of weakness for celebrity gossip too. Uh, oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah. Let's take a look at this. this looks like a tabloid Mr. Old Bag would read. Alright, let's see here. Uh, Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager of the stars, Miss A.A. You, you see now, don't you? What? You can't stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corda didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials A.A. Adrian Andrews? Y yes, exactly. That's big news. But he's kind of odd. That woman, Miss Andrews. Together with the biggest rival of her client? Ah, it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people! His powders look so happy! Pearls is just following along, not having any idea as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Okay... Huh. Star mm, love scandal. Well, this is something to bring to her attention. Let's go. All right. Will you tell me more information if I show you this? No, you won't. Fine. If I'm not gonna get anything else out of you, I'm gonna ignore you. Bye. Let's try hallway. Hi there. Didn't forget you. Oh yeah, about your camera. Uh, I just bought that camera. Who did it? That thieving rascal. Please don't look straight at me while you're saying that. If I found the bugger who went and done this, they're gonna pay with a bullet. And if you do that, don't expect me to defend you. Just saying. Uh, let's see what else. 
Here. Uh, do you know anything? Uh, I told you how many times now. I'm a journalist. I got it for running last in my head. I forget things here and there. Please don't get so worked up there over this. Huh. I don't care if you beg me. No, don't. Don't go there. Be extra tough on kids. That's this guy's motto for learning youngsters. If you say so. I'm gonna ignore you now. Just like I do everyone else. Alright. Let's go to... Eh, on guard's room. Unless... Wait a second. I could probably talk to her. What was the, the thing about? The big scoop. Alright. In that case... Take that! I'd like to know. Lotta, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop! What I want to know about the... What I want to know are the details of this scoop. Th that's not something I can tell you. I mean, that's my bread and butter. Alright then. An unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm going to say that you were looking into a scandal. Yeah. Could it be that you, a lot of heart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Wong Korda and this person? Th th this woman! She's Adrian Andrews, Mad on Guard's manager. Ugh. Medical Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. He would be the it would be the hottest story this season this season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up on any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have a backup. Backup. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that that the, what's it? News sauce? Uh you mean a uh, news source? That's it! So show me something that shows that one guy had some with Miss Andrews. All right, this is my here's the news sauce. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. A jammin' ninja midnight rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A A. Ah! Scorter didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. On Guard's manager, Adrian Andrews, she has the initials AA. You saw this article and then you thought you'd take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were looking around Mr. Corridor's room last night. Wah! Gotcha. So, tell me more. You were looking into Mr. Corda and Mrs. Andrews' affair, weren't you? You got it! I was getting myself a scoop by catching this secret maiden. But there's already an article of it outed on one of those weekly tabloid magazines. And it's no longer breaking news. What you start saying? I'm just AA. It's kind of a vague thing with that. Ain't no proof for nothing. People are gonna want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. I saw. That's what I was getting, getting photos. Oh. I was gonna whip the readers' interest with some gossip and a little, and a little misleading. I spice it up a little myself an ex exclusive story. Wow, a lot of nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing a spicy article, you know? But. Huh? But? The paper I wrote on it, my note to myself, it's gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. I came with my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Y yeah, I, I understand. It's enough to make a guy go bonkers, I tell you. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really wanted the note back, huh? No idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold-faced lie. 
Well, at least I have more about this camera. Like its location. At least supposed location. Alright. Huh. So, okay. Looks like we got one more person to talk to. Which would be... Obviously, that would be over in Mr. On Guard's room. Actually, wait. Who am I talking to her about? Motive for murder. I don't have anything for that. So I think I'll back away for now. I don't think I nearly have enough. All I have is a supposed scandal. And eh, everything else that is just hypothesis and theory. Let's go here. Detective Gumshoe said they'd be an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Uh, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are tight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. What's this airtight evidence? So what do you mean by the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. T two And both of them are in this photo. The first is the button that was missing from the victim's chest. Huh. That's the button you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yep. I found it in the fold of his Nickel Samurai special pants. Up, uh, up. Uh, and the second is... Knife of his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife of his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Uh, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. And the testimony? So what about this airtight testimony? Is that old security lady, Miss Oldback. I thought so. What do you mean, you you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Uh, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck at the tent, and there's no turning it down. Trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Olback saw it all, pal. She saw Miss Don Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. N no way Oh, great. Lovely. Wonderful. Well, great. Well, let's see what he knows about uh, this new thing we found. We're pretty interested in this little bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal of Mr. Corda? But why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. <gasps> suicide? Her name was Cas the Celeste Impacts. And she was Juan Corda's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Mr. Impacts was Mr. Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Adrian everything she Andrews, everything she knows in the business of Scrub One. Her mentor. A woman who was both Mr. Corda's manager and Mrs. Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? Do you want to know more about her, bro? Sure. I might want to, to pass to like say no to info. She was the victim's manager. It was also Miss Adrian Man Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide, and now these two are linked again, but by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence. But ah! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. M -M Ms. Von Gorma! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. Y you don't... You don't mean... I do. 
Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. That's... Wait! Please wait, sir! If I don't get this month's pay, I'll st Quiet! If it weren't for traitors like you... I would have won. Is that what you were want to say? <gasps> what? Who? That voice. Edgeworth! It's been a long time. Right. Th this person! This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Franziska. Y you! How dare you show your face with me without a shred of shame upon it! You soiled the Von Karma name and dragged it through the mud! You run away with a tail behind your legs like an ill beat dog you are! <sighs> are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? Be perfect in every way. Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. Y you You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself! I, I haven't given up yet! I won't lose! This case is mine! I'll never hand it over to you! Never! I'll be the Phoenix right! I will see you tomorrow! In court! That'll be a clinical lesson to the meaning of total victory! Huh. <sighs> Still the same wild mare she always was. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I... I never wanted to see you again! I thought that's enough of a warm welcome for someone who you haven't seen in years. Are you going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? This wild mare hasn't gone given on yet, it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at this trial tomorrow. What is this supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And that's the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need of my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what is going on inside his head? And what's this proof of Von Karma blood? A lot of things may have happened. However, Manfred Von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of, of a Von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. And those loss, are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It's been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. <laughs> I see. Let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Why I stand in court? Well, if it was Francisca, she would def most definitely say, I will definitely fit you this time, the instant she saw me. But... The courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say? Who's the... Those who would think of only their own goals, their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I've yet to learn? Me? Huh. <laughs> well, that's enough for now. The time will come when you see... When you will see... The time when you will see is coming soon enough. Fine. Have you seen this yet? I have no interest in talking about useless evidence. Put a little more thought into what you show me, Phoenix Wright. Still as stuck up as ever. Alright. Let's see. Things I can show him. Nope. 
completed out of this one. Nope, that's not nearly as important. Wine glass. Really? I thought that was important. How about this? Nope. Fine. How about this? Uh... Do you care about anything, really? I know a couple things. I can show you... Man on Guard. While I was abroad, these deplorable types of actors became popular, I take it. Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is his motto. Refreshing? What is so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like the pollen is not treating him well this year. Alright, and one quarter. There is an interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting close to him? But that's pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value when there's more to be found. Huh. Well, that is about this guy. How about this girl? How about her? We're looking into leads. We can only look into a few key players with our limited resources. There's no reason for us to waste our energy investigating this person. Why don't you just tell it to me straight and say, I don't have any info? Alright. Adrian Andrews. Adrian Andrews. She holds a large secret within herself. A secret? You can't help but feel that this whole case revolves around her. If you say so. And her? Oh, you're not... Okay. And you. 25? No. Okay, you're not going to talk about your past and why you left? How about her? <sighs> this woman is another key to the case. Th do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But suddenly she was called away by a production and became Juan Corda's manager. And then a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. But, but her death was a suicide, right? Yes. But there is still one riddle left unsolved. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Well, that's strange. Is it? There it is! Miss Impax's death was almost certainly a suicide. Of that was no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impacts had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police thinks it was Mr. Juan Corda himself. The, the victim? He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person to have a chance to hide her note. Mr. Corda hid his own manager's note? But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part one. Part one? Alright. Uh, let's look at this then. Let's go take a look at this. At this. Nope, go back to my evidence. Deceased. Uh, found by one quarter. Was it hidden? Is it? I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all, the reports that have multiple parts like that one. This has that has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here's the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name <gasps> Adrian Andrews <laughs> Miss Andrews? Uh what did she do? She she tried to Kill herself? She doesn't seem like the, the kind of person to try. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just her image. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret that she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her codependency. That's the key word. Codependency? The word most unsuited to describe anything that woman. Codependency? So, how are Adrian Andrews and codependency related? 
Adrian Andrews attempted suicide. It was a few days after the death of Celeste Impax. And? And why did Adrian Andrews think about it? Quite possibly because she had lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she... Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste Impacts, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Is this what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempt at suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling class sessions. She was a person who looks for someone who can trust unconditionally. And she, once she finds someone, she blindly follows them. Without someone to guide her, she feels uneasy and can't carry herself through life. And that's... That's her codependency? When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. That's the second part. But... This is terrible. I don't know if I want to bring this up, though. <sighs> Let's do it. Thanks, Edgeworth. Be back soon enough. Yeah, not you. I don't care about you. Not now. I'm, I'm kind of busy. Yeah, hey, I'm just going on. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. But she looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca von Karma. Miss von Karma? What are you doing here? Uh, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? That's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy. Don't make me laugh. I'll show you something interesting. The little girl. Huh? Well, what is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on the detective. And with this, I know that fool's every move. So that noise we heard with this, was this receiver. It feels... I feel really sorry for poor Detective Gumshoe now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews! Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, Alright. What are those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Like someone caught her off guard? Alright. Well, I hate to do this to you, but... Take this! This is gonna be a toughie. Why was one quarter murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Uh Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. Ongard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answer? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corda. You were not that close? That's right. I've never been good with being intimate with other, with another person. You're no good at being intimate with another person? Somehow, I highly doubt that. Uh, let's see, is this the one I'm looking for? Looks like the one I'm going for. No, it isn't. Let's not bring out my wild card first. 
It should be the tabloids. You and Mr. Corda had been intimate relate had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third rate tabloid article. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people bought into this story. <sighs> As expected of a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on her good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to that person? Me? Need to get close to Mr. Corda? As if there was such ever such a need. Don't you ever get... Didn't you get close to, to Mr. Corda for this person's sake? Celeste Impacts. Your mentor. Why do you know about Celeste? Miss Impacts. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Corda's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Corda so you could find out more about her suicide. Y you have a great imagination! You may have a future yet with this slimy muckrack with a future third-rate tabloid! M Mr. Andrews? Th that was no mystery surrounding her death. None. It'd be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Is there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way your suicide was, resol was resolved. Just look at this! Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? <laughs> it looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corda? D Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing! That's why you became intimate with Mr. Corda! I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulted rambling long enough! It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. I have nothing to, it has nothing to do with me. I don't even know that a suicide note was ever found. I'm a, per, I'm a person who doesn't care about what's going on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give. However, I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is the proof that Celeste impacts with someone very special to you. Forgive me. Miss Andrews, you... you went through it too, didn't you? Went through what? A suicide. <laughs> Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help and you live by yourself. Y yes I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie. A facade. <laughs> You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. Did that? You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why... When... When she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! <gasps> when Celeste passed away so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what would become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Juan Corrida of hiding Impact's note? You heard about it, and thought to recover it for him if, no, from him by getting close, am I right? <laughs> if that's the case, then why everything changes? What? what? What do you mean? What topic we just... What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one most likely to want to Mr. Mor Corda dead. M me Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. <laughs> even commit sue even commit murder. Murder? <laughs> So sorry. <sighs> it's true. I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I've pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. 
I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. M Miss Andrews. That one thing... It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I... I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden a suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corda. Celeste, without her, without her, I became scared. Everything, everything seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corda to recover her suicide note, correct? <laughs> Looks like the tablet reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My... My attempted suicide. I'd like you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews, if if people found out my weakness, I I would sooner choose to die than live. Oh, all right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews, I guess she's always the always thinking type. She never says anything carelessly. It seems. Thank you very much. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in their hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is the card you're holding? Huh? Oh, oh, this? I don't quite know. It was just suddenly appeared in my ba handbag. What is it? It looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it'd be a rare occasion. Well, I must be off. I leave Miss Arngard in your capable hands. <sighs> well then. Seashell card. Well, I think we've gathered all about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. She looks like she's worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all. She's been walking around the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? <gasps> uh, oh, no! I'm okay, really. I'm fine. I really am. You don't look fine to me. We're going home. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Alright, we're just heading home. See you, willpowers. See you, something old bag. Bye. 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 So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impact's suicide note? That's right. She also was the one to discover victim's body. Clever. <gasps> uh, Mr. Nick! The chance saver! Hello? This is the Law Office of Phoenix Wright & Co. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. But Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not come within a few feet of her this whole time. <sighs> Which is why I suppose she is absolutely famished. <gasps> what?! So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait! Maya! Let me hear her! Very well. Ask my... Maya! Is that you? Sis! Ask my sis! Maya! Maya! Dang it! He cut me off! Mystic Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis. What does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. <sighs> You're a hopeless one. Uh, so sorry. 
<laughs> Mia! I have a message from Maya. So come, ask me anything you want about her. Uh, uh, yes? Uh, yes. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. The kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. Uh, I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. She read the notes... She, I read the notes she left. Then I gathered as much information as I, about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit, spirit channel like this. Pretty smart of her. And, and the kidnapper? The kidnapper! What is he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went on to answer a phone call at the hotel and she was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. <sighs> Maya was locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard from when I was with her. When you were with her. <laughs> I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the really the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised me he, would, he was going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. What's this? It feels like there's a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Uh, there's just all sorts of things piled up here. But it's too dark to see. Huh? Uh, someone dropped a card here. It kind of looks like a business card. But there's no name on it. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Try it, it's locked. But this door's locked, it seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card and a stiff piece of cardboard. Then, click, it magically opened the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here that I could use. Ah, that's it! This shell card! If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius! Alright, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it. Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here! I shouldn't keep Nick waiting. Or worried. Whew, Maya's safe. At least she seems to be escaping, so that's good. Ugh, but that card. Huh. Why did Adrian Andrews have that card? Well, that's strange. Anyway, this is Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All, on the Ouija Van 64D. See you next episode. I guess we'll be doing the trial. See ya.